Welcome back to BBB Adventures and episode four. Yeah, episode four of the Builder Series. Again, for those Again. of you that have been watching and providing feedback, we really appreciate it. We're we continue to be happy that folks are interested in what we're doing. And it's the feedback that'll help us make sure that it's interesting content. Today, we're gonna to do a couple of things. I wanted to give a quick update on what's going on at Frank's place. I've actually been really busy the last couple of weeks. Then we're gonna go back in time and uh, I'm gonna bring you along a maintenance cycle that I did to Birdie to mostly focused on the drivetrain in preparation for a trip we decided to take. Uh, if you watched last week's episode, you know that in, in November, early November, we bought Birdie and we decided that we wanted to take her south for a couple of reasons. Number one, to get out of Idaho and the cold and snow in January. And also to learn about her current configuration. We have lots of ideas about what we want to do, but this trip we figured would help us really learn about what we do and don't like about the factory layout as we continue to talk about and plan for her major rebottle. We're in, front, we're in the front part of Frank's place now. If you watched episode one of the Builder series, when I, when I was walking through how we're gonna divide Frank's place up into functional areas, I'm actually standing in the automotive repair and restoration area. This is where the lift that we assembled will eventually be is right in this area. Uh, so what I've been doing is I built some more cleat wall, like it's in the other area of the shop, and I have been feverishly making sawdust uh, building these tool holders. The idea is to have the tools that you use most often readily available. So you're not digging through a toolbox drawer or whatever to find a, a 16 millimeter wrench. Uh, I'm using magnets to hold these up. Um, these are all mounted with a cleat. So it's got a cleat. I can move this if I need these wrenches in the other part of the shop, if I need these wrenches over on this workbench, if I need them in the bicycle area, which will eventually have a cleat well, I can just take this over, put it up, and I can have them. So it's a modular, portable uh, system. I've got metric, SAE. I, I built something similar for sockets. These are the 3 8 drive. These are deep, regular sockets. These are the 3 8 drivers extensions. Uh, again, all, all held up with magnets. Um, I'm actually haven't built the quarter inch drive version of this yet for my quarter inch sockets. I plan on actually filming that and showing you guys how I built these. Um, yeah, so look for that in a future episode. So I'm not gonna go through every one of the things I built, but you can basically imagine here whatever you need. Uh, for example, the I've got this for my funnels that I built. So now when I need a funnel, I got stuff for oil changes. This is gloves that you can see I haven't been using and rags. This is a workbench. I built this from materials that were in another workbench that I had for years. It was portable, it was on wheels. That didn't that no longer served the function I needed it to. So I basically disassembled and built this using I had to add a few materials, but for the most part, I reused, repurposed something that I took apart and reconfigured it into this. So I've got cleats here, screwdrivers, pliers, vice grips, whatever. Uh, and again, I can move these tools around. If I need screwdrivers in a different place, I can actually pick this up, move it carefully into the other area, whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. While I've made some great progress, there's still lots I want to do. I want to run some airline. Uh, I'm going to try to film some of that, uh, but I've quite honestly run out of time. Uh, we need to get this Carmen Ghia out of here. We need to get the lift moved over here and I need to get working on Luna because we have a, a, an adventure planned for Luna. In its current condition, it's not roadworthy enough to take the trip that we want to take. So. I need to get moving on that. So we're, we're, we're gonna wind up this first phase of the shop rehab and and get to a position where I can, where I can tear apart the van. I plan on taking you guys through the refresh of the van. Uh, 
I'm going to have to do a lot, including take the drivetrain out and reseal it because it leaks oil, et cetera, et cetera. So look for that in a future episode. But... What? We're filming here. Do you want to be the star? Well, now it's time to go back in time to December when I worked on, I spent, I spent a lot of time on uh, Birdie on her drivetrain. So let's, let's go to that now. To build the list of items I wanted to cover in the 30,000 mile drivetrain service, I consulted the 1993 Toyota service manual and included some things I wanted to do to establish a baseline for our life with Birdie. So here's the list. I figured we wanted to start with clean oil and a new filter. Same with the air filter and fuel filter. It was time for new fan belts, spark plugs, and so I figured new spark plug wires were also a good idea. And while I was there, I figured it would be a good time for a new distributor cap and rotor. Moving on to fluids, I put changing the automatic transmission fluid and filter as well as rear diff oil and coolant on the list. At some point, I wanted to flush the brake fluid but I didn't put this on the list due to time constraints. I didn't have any history about the brakes, so I put front brakes and wheel bearings on the list. Finally, based on some reading I'd done, I wanted to install new high quality Bilstein shocks on the front. Besides a good cleaning and minor stuff like tightening all of the cabinet hardware, there were a few more major things I wanted to do before we took a trip in Birdie 1.0. When we bought Birdie, we knew that there was a small leak in the cab over bedroom and in the rear window. So I wanted to address these before taking a trip. Water leaks are the Achilles heel of these vintage Toyota motorhomes. I also wanted to inspect and reseal any areas of the roof that looked suspect. Finally, we knew the fridge wasn't working properly after our drive home in Birdie, so I wanted to address that. This is gonna be a two-part video in order to cover some of the things in this list. We aren't actually gonna cover everything. Why? Well, if we covered everything, these episodes would be six hours long. And I began to run out of time, so at some point I stopped filming and focused on getting the work done ahead of our trip south. So I'm here at the shop today, over at Frank's place, and uh, we're starting to work on Birdie and uh, preparing it for our first voyage. Like we've talked about, we're gonna take it to Texas in the, uh, at the beginning of the year, go see the kids, sort of take it on its maiden voyage before we basically come back and figure out how to convert it into the tiny house, you know, nomadic vehicle that we ultimately want. But the refrigerator wasn't really working, so we did some research. Uh, it's a typical RV refrigerator. It works on propane or electricity, but it wasn't really working. Uh, it would get cold, but then it wouldn't stay cold. We did a thing called burping. We took it out of where it's supposed to be mounted, disconnected the propane, unplugged it, undid all the screws, pulled it out, and then we rotated it on its right side for a day, and then on, a, on, its, on its upside down for a day, and now it's right side up. I've leveled it, and we are just plugged in, and we're testing it. Uh, theoretically, this, this process is called burping, and it's supposed to get air pockets out. Maybe if there's some debris in the system, move that around. It, uh, some people have had success getting these refrigerators to work again. We just need it working well enough for our trip down to Texas. Our, uh, ultimately, we're not gonna use this refrigerator. So I've had it plugged in for a, maybe an hour and uh, it's cold in there. So, don't know, maybe I fixed it. The other thing we're doing is I took this window out. It was leaking, you can see, I don't know if you can see here, but there's a spot where it was leaking. So I've taken it out, resealing it. So we're gonna make sure that that doesn't leak for our trip. But the vehicle now has 30,000 miles on it and it's due for its first major tune-up. Even though it's a 30 year old car, it's only got 30,000 miles. So I purchased a bunch of genuine Toyota parts and uh, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of stuff. Welcome back to Frank's place. It's the next day. And uh, I didn't film much yesterday when I was working on the engine. So I'll get you caught up on that. Uh, the other sort of bad news is uh, the burping on the refrigerator did not work. So I plugged it in yesterday. It got cold for a little bit and then it stopped getting cold. So I've given up. This is now garbage. On Facebook Marketplace, I did find 
this small like dorm size fridge there's a plug back there uh i'm gonna mount it in here for our trip in january so that's our temporary solution i only paid 40 bucks for that we'll take it we'll sell it for 40 bucks when we get back because this cabinet's going to get rebuilt uh, when we do the remodel. One of the things I did yesterday was I replaced this fuel filter, which is on the frame rail underneath the truck. But it's quite a big fuel filter. So on the engine, I got a bunch of the air distribution system removed so I can get access to the spark plugs. And uh, I replaced this belt, which is the belt that drives the alternator. So I had to replace that belt. I took the belt that runs the power steering pump off and the belt that runs the air conditioning compressor and uh, I took the battery out to get clearance and I noticed that this Freon line is all corroded and then there's some corrosion down there you can see and even this pulley's a little corroded uh, and then down the side of this radiator so most of the engine's clean there's not any rust or corrosion this is obviously some sort of a battery overflow battery explosion and when I pulled the battery out, I noticed it wasn't positioned correctly. And there are these two divots in the case of the battery. The battery had actually slid over and was rubbing against this pulley. And then I ordered some Pour 15, because I'm gonna go ahead and treat these areas what got corroded uh, to sort of prevent any more rust. I did take out one spark plug over here uh, I noticed that uh, the plug wire wasn't seated properly. Anyway, you could see that the top of the spark plug was corroded, which means it wasn't getting a consistent contact with the spark plug wire, which probably explained the rough idle. Uh, so I expect when I get all of this done, and I'm putting all new plug wires and a new distributor in since we're at 30,000 miles, I suspect this thing's going to run a lot better. I did have one catastrophe well not catastrophe but one this connector is the connector that goes here this is the mass airflow sensor and uh, I couldn't figure out how to get that connector loose and when I was prying on it with a screwdriver it actually broke it cracked there's this little bale there's this little wire that you that you take a screwdriver and you loosen the bell is sort of locked in anyway. It, it's obvious to me how it works now, now that I broke it, but when I was trying to get it loose, it wasn't obvious. So, I'll probably put some electrical tape or maybe seal that up somehow when I put it all together so that connection remains watertight. Uh, here's the original air cleaner. It's a little dirty. I'll clean all that up. I have a new air cleaner. Yeah, so today, I'm going to Finish replacing the belts, change all the spark plugs, the spark plug wires. A quick update. I got all the belts changed. This was a, this was a hard one to get on until I realized I was trying to get slack out of the system by pushing the power steering pump the wrong direction. Then all of a sudden it was a little bit easier, but I got all three belts changed. Now I'm working on the spark plugs. I got the three out on this side. I got the first two replaced. I just took the third one out. And, uh, you know, they look, they look pretty good. It's running a little lean, if anything. But uh, these are probably the factory plugs. So I'm putting new ones in. It's a bitch. I mean, the spark plug holes down in there and it's, this is not easy, but uh, I'm getting her done. I'm going to keep working. It's uh, slow. It's slow. The, the spark plugs are way easier to get to on this side, so I'm doing the worst side first. First thing I do is check the gap. It's supposed to be 31 thousandths. They come, they come pre-gapped, so, so far they've all been really good. <laughs> These, these Toyota factory plug wires come all nicely done with the little 
the little parts that snap into the to the different parts of the shroud or whatever they're all marked nicely i would they were expensive but i think it's worth it so i'm gonna replace the wires on this side and then do this other side i've got all three spark plugs on this side replaced i got the wires the new wires this is the new wires and uh, like i said it's really good to buy the toyota parts because it has all the little little fittings now this was not easy i mean there's all this pollution control crap that really gets in the way of getting down in there so this was the tough side new distributor cap there's the old one here's the new wires that go on this side the new coil wire so now I'm going to replace the three plugs on this side and then this this side of the wire the spark plug wire harness replace the cap and rotor and this part of the job is done so that's what I'm gonna to try to get done today long time since I spent any serious time working on engines. All that time in Taiwan. And I just haven't uh, bought a Tesla. And I haven't really done much. I guess I I guess I did work on the Luna. But working on a 60 year old Chevy, working on a 30 year old Toyota are very different. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Torquing spark plugs always freaks me out. It would be a nightmare to strip one. Oh, come on. There. Whew. Well, I took the distributor cap off. And you can see that the rotor is pretty corroded and uh, there's actually some corrosion, a little bit of corrosion and buildup on the contacts inside the distributor cap. So it's probably the original distributor cap, 30,000 miles, 30 years. So it's probably a good thing I'm changing it. I did notice something today. It's gonna be sort of interesting. This door, because the, these motorhomes are pretty small, this door isn't very wide. And that old refrigerator that needs to come out of here um, doesn't fit through the door, even if I take the doors off. So I think what we're going to do is take this seat out, take this passenger seat out, and wiggle that refrigerator out the cab. Yeah. So that'll be fun. That's something that has to happen before we take our first trip. This is the propane line for the fridge. I gotta cap that off. I gotta secure this new little refrigerator I bought today for the trip. Yeah, stuff like that. Not a whole lot to do. I'm gonna get her done before we... The goal is to get it all done before Christmas. So we come back from Christmas we can just go. Welcome back to Frank's place. It's been a couple of days since I got back to the shop. And today, I got my helper with me. Disco. Say hi. Yeah, today I got my helper with me. Yeah, he's the shop dog. Official shop dog. Yeah, that's Disco. Today, we're gonna start draining some of the fluids. So well, here we are. Under the, under the car. This is the transmission here. Looks pretty good. This is the drain. Loosen that and let the transmission fluid drain out into a, a catch pan. This should be red. Yep. It looks good. So we'll just let that drain out. You know, there's a torque converter that has a bunch of this in there, but I'm, 
I'm not going to drain the torque converter. Uh, you know, we'll exchange a majority of the fluid and that should be good enough. As part of this, I want to change the filter. These transmissions uh, hauling around this big, this motor home, it's a lot of weight and these transmissions get, they're loaded up pretty good. So I think it's best to change the filter and the fluid. I just called the Toyota dealer and ordered a filter. So I got to take all of the bolts uh, that hold the pan up off, pop the filter off. Now what's interesting is they said there's no gasket. It's just RTV. So uh, no, no gasket. So you just put uh, RTV in the interface and put the pan back on. So I always get a little nervous when I take something off that's not leaking and put it back and hope that it doesn't leak again. But I think it's important to get this filter changed. So I'm going to get her done. Yeah, I'm going to help. Okay, so I figured out, I did a little bit of research, found a YouTube channel for T100 pickups. The tube that's in there, so this oil pan is in fact the tube for the dipstick. So, uh, and, it, and it is attached permanently to this, but uh, halfway up the tube is a joint where there's a O-ring. So you basically can pull this off. So I had to take, there was a cross member here, a chassis cross member sitting over there in the ground. I took it off, took all 13 or 19 or however many bolts there are holding this pan off. And now I'm ready to uh, try to pop this pan off. I don't want to bend anything. I don't want to scratch anything. Okay, so what I ended up doing, let me see, get the camera right. What I ended up doing was taking this painter's tool and hammering it down, get it stuck in here and hammering it down this way and sort of using it to pry and eventually I broke it loose. And I think that was a, probably a good move versus sticking a screwdriver in there. So now I can just sort of pry this thing off. And this is where I need to go to the other side because I got this deal I got to deal with with this tube. Yeah, that was nice. Fucking face full of... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got some of that in my face, but... It's all right. Okay. I'm gonna clean this mess up. Let this drain and start to clean up this gasket surface. But, uh, okay, I've got the, uh, the pan over by the parts washer and uh, there's these magnets. And uh, they're supposed to pick up any wear products that come out of the transmission. But you wanna look for, you know, big chunks of stuff. What we got here is typical for uh, 30,000 miles, but we'll want to clean up these magnets and put, it, put them back so that they can continue to do their job, making sure that those wear products that naturally occur as things in the transmission wear, metal parts on metal parts, even though they're lubricated, there's a little bit of wear 
but you don't want that fine metal dust circulating throughout the bearings and that sort of stuff. So that's what these magnets do is capture that. So we'll clean those magnets up and make sure that uh, they're ready to go. But I got to clean the pan. I got to start working on this surface. Got to get all of this stuff off and inspect that ceiling surface uh, before we reassemble it. So that's what I'll do now. I cleaned on this for a while. The inside's nice and clean. Even the outside, I got most of the stuff off of it. It looks good enough to put back on. The next thing I gotta do is get all this pink forma gasket off this flange. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. I've been scraping on this pan for a while and I've tried various techniques. I tried this wire brush, which works okay. I tried some wire brushes on a on a motor, like a drill motor, and uh, it's just too aggressive. It was taking the paint off. And what I find, what I figured out works really, really good is this little piece of wood. It's a little piece of quarter inch plywood. And uh, I use these sharp, use these sharp edges uh, to sort of scrape on it. And it, it's, a, it's enough to sort of get this old gasket material loose, but it's not, hard enough to actually scratch the paint, which I, I really don't want to scratch the paint. And so uh, then when it gets dull, because these corners wear down pretty fast, I just take it over to the chop saw and I cut a, you know, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch off and it, it's like resharpening it. See it? So it works pretty good. And it, it gets down in there and Kills this stuff off, but it doesn't damage the get the pan. It doesn't damage the steel of the pan and get through the paint. So, yeah, it's a little wood scraper. All right. Well, I've been making some progress. I got this flange pretty well cleaned up. Uh, I was using that wood scraper, and then when I got all I could get with that. I went back with this brass wire brush that was in the parts washer and it sort of cleaned up the rest of it. Then the holes, the bolt holes, actually had some of that gasket material in there. So I took this, this, but I basically went in each hole and scraped around and got all the goo out of it. So now I'm gonna take this to the parts washer, clean it up one more time really good, reinstall the magnets, the drain plug, and I think this is good to go. This is the filter, and I'm assuming you take these one, two, three, bolts off it's easy to replace but this is the ceiling surface that that pan that we just cleaned goes on so we have to get all of this gasket material off and the the trick here is not to damage this soft aluminum the pan is steel so it's a little harder to damage so we have to be careful not to damage this soft aluminum and then this stuff comes off in little pieces and actually i can you can see a little piece here on this Wipe that off. So you've got to make sure you don't leave any of that gasket material, you know, inside the transmission. So, you know, it actually comes off the aluminum a little bit easier than it comes off the steel. So I'm just going to carefully, slowly, meticulously scrape all of this away. Yep. Well, that's what I'm going to do. So... We will check in with you later. Okay, I am ready to put this pan back on the transmission. I this has no gasket. You use this RTV former gasket stuff. I bought it directly from Toyota because I felt like that's probably the best stuff to use is the legit Toyota stuff. So that's what I bought, it's called Forma Gasket in Place. Comes with this cool key to, oh dear. That didn't work very good, look at that, it ripped up the bottom of that, so I will. Hmm. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is clean the surface one more time with alcohol. Now, once you expose this material to oxygen, Gerald, I think you got about 15 minutes or so to assemble it because it does start to set up. Shit, not cool that the bottom of this is opened up. Hopefully I don't need this whole tube because I ain't going to get this whole tube. But an eighth of an inch continuous bead. Make sure there are no gaps. It's really making a mess because the bottom of this tube blew out. Probably not filming this very well, but I my hands are all covered with this shit, so I can't really pick up the camera. And I'm feeling this time pressure. All right. Now, okay, now. Got it under here. And I'm going to put a little transmission fluid on the o-rings of the where the drain fill goes in now Can this be so fucking hard? Well, yeah. So I didn't have the camera set up properly. That was way harder than I thought it was going to be. So I kicked the camera side. And eventually, the battery died. So I'm at least going to crawl under there now and show you what I did uh, and how I did it. Try to explain it, but it was really hard. And actually, I don't think it went that well. I had trouble lining up the holes between the oil, the pan and the transmission. It felt like I wiggled the pan around on the surface, I, I, you know, which I feel like maybe compromises the seal. I don't know. I guess part of me isn't going to be surprised if that pan leaks and I end up taking that pan down again and trying it again. The second time I would probably, I would be better prepared. I didn't have, I had the rat, the socket on the torque wrench without a extension so i couldn't get to the bolts then i think i over tightened them because i didn't understand how my torque wrench worked so that i loosened them and retorqued them i, I don't know it it just was not awesome <laughs> it was that was hard so uh I'll, let's get into there and i'll show you what i did and then i'm gonna let that rtv cure a day tomorrow i'll put some fluid in there and uh fill it up and see if the automatic transmission fluid leaks, but let's climb under there and I'll show you what I did. So I had a hard time lining up the bolts in the pan and I, I don't know, I hope we got a, I hope we got a good gasket formed there, but lining up the bolts was hard. Uh, you can't put the pan just straight up because you got that tube that down tube you got to get reconnected with the rest of the down. Yeah, anyway. I'm sure if I was up on a lift or if I had jacked this up, you know, next time I might j jack the front end up so there's more clearance under here. I, d I don't know, but yeah, that was hard. Anyway, it's on. Tomorrow we'll put some fluid in there and see, see if it leaks. It's not pretty. 
but the transmission pan is installed. I've filled it up. It's been full for more than a week and there are no leaks. So even though it's not pretty and it was sort of a pain in the butt, uh, yeah, that's done. And I would have to do that again for a while, but that's, if you uh, do this, you could probably do a better job with the May Forma gasket uh, if, your, if your tube doesn't blow a hole in its bottom like the tube I had. And I've installed this cross member. This cross member has to come off in order to get the pan. So I've got that all redone. So that, that part is finished. Well, that's it for this episode. So let's review what we got done. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Builder Series as we complete the rest of the tasks on this list and get Birdie all ready for our trek to Texas. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the ride. <laughs>